Okay, so we looked in f exercises 4a uh, at um, the use of the SF Play object, um, and that involved reading sound from the hard drive. So using an, an, an object to uh, access uh, a sound file on the hard drive and play it back. And that's fine, um, that's a very useful object to, to have. Um, <coughs> As you saw, you can uh, use multiple channels with it. Um, you can, uh, you know, and you can uh, you can have a number of different um, uh, SF Play objects running simultaneously. You can change the pitch of it. Uh, if you had a look at the help file, you'll have seen that you can choose where within that sound file you can play back. So there's a it's quite a powerful object, um, but there's another way of playing things back from your uh, you know, sound files back on it within Max MSP. Um, and that is to use what's called the buffer object and a variety of uh, objects which, um, uh, which are related to that. So that's what we're going to investigate here. Um, over here I've got Max MSP exercises 4A. This is not 4A, this is actually 4B, um, as you'll see from the title up here. So, um, the first thing we'll look at is the buffer itself. Now what buffer is, is a means of uh, or visualising as far as the object is concerned, um, but uh, it stores sound file information within random access memory. So rather than SF Play which uh, refers to a sound file on your hard disk and plays it back directly from there, so that's your, your kind of, uh, your, your normal storage um, uh, disk. What buffer does, as I say, is to read back from uh, RAM. And RAM is the computer's short-term memory. Uh, and because it's short-term memory, it's, 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 uh, it's lost. It's, it's own, you know, information is only stored in there temporarily. Um, and when you, for example, switch off your computer or you close a program, then the information that was stored in there temporarily for the purposes of use by that program is lost. Um, so, uh, and the advantage of using random access memory to store information in is, is it very, very quick access. It's much, much quicker than uh, accessing stuff on the hard drive. Um, so, the buffer can be used for short term storage of sound. So, for example, if you are uh, in a live performance, you can um, quickly record stuff to random access memory and retrieve it and loop within it and and do kind of interesting manipulation of it in very you know uh, very very quickly um, this is not stored to your hard drive unless you tell it to be um, and maybe I'll, I'll uh, if I remember I will show you how to do that um, but enough talk um, let's make one so using an object we will put in buffer. So it's buffer tilde. And there are various arguments that you need to put in for buffer to work correctly. One of which is to label it. Now you can have a number of different buffers. Um, and so you need, in order to differentiate them, you need to give them a name. So we will call this one my sound one. And you need to give it a size. So what you can think of is, the, is that the buffer might be kind of a box uh, within random access memory or RAM. Um, and you need, in order to access the contents of that box, you need to give it a name and you need to tell it, uh, well, and you also need to give it uh, a size. So you need to tell, um, uh, tell Max how big you want it to be. And obviously the bigger the box, the, uh, the more you can store within it. And your size will be in milliseconds. So we'll give this one a, a size of 4,000 milliseconds. So it will store 4,000 milliseconds worth of sound. And then another argument that you can give it, although this is optional, is to say how many channels you want it to have. And you can have up to four in a buffer. So we'll put in two for the time being. So that's one buffer. And when I, um, when I uh, click outside the, the box to initialize it, uh, we have uh, we have one inlet and two outlets. Uh, we'll come back to what those do in a minute. Um, and if I lock the patch and double click on the object, then it comes up with a little um, what will be 
a, a, a basically a sound file or a waveform display and you can see that it uh, has four seconds worth of sound in it and two channels. Now you can interact with that box a little bit, uh, the, this pop-up window. Um, in fact we will look later on at a, an easier means within Max that you can access the contents of the buffer. Um, and uh, Well anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. But as I say, you can have more than one buffer. So if I unlock the patch again, we can say buffer and call this one my sound 2. And we can make this one bigger, so we can make this 10 seconds long. Um, and maybe we just want one channel in this one. So we will leave it at that. We don't need to put in a, um, an argument to tell it the channels. And this time when I double click on it, we have um, what appears to be the same size pop-up window, but this time it accommodates 10 seconds worth of sound. And obviously is only one channel. And like I say, you can have four channels of um, of uh, uh, of data as well, um, and you know you, your your name can be anything you like. So you could be calling it Henry, um, and uh, and again we will put in a size which might be two seconds this time, and and four channels in size. So this time, double click, and we have four channels worth um, with two seconds of time in it. So that's the buffer object, and uh, this buffer object can be referred to. So the contents of that, once you've, and we'll look at this in a minute, uh, you can record into a buffer, you can play back contents from a buffer, and there are various objects that you can use in order to do that. We won't look at all of them in this tutorial, um, but uh, suffice to say that they exist. So things like index tilde. And what you have to do in order to tell it to refer to a particular buffer is to give the name of that buffer. So we'll put in my sound one. And I could have a play object, my sound one. And so you can have a variety of different objects which all refer to the same uh, buffer. So they all refer to the, 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 the same uh, box, for example, um, and can retrieve the contents of that box, but they all do so in different ways. Um, so another one is Groove, my sound. And incidentally, with all of these, actually some of them don't accommodate more than one channel, which I won't talk too much about now. But uh, you notice, or if you remember, this my sound one buffer has two channels. So in the case of Play and Groove, um, they can cope with uh, reading both of those channels. And you notice that um, play currently only has one uh, output, which is labelled channel one output. Or, um, and if I wanted it to be able to access both channels, access both channels of the buffer, I would need to give an argument of two, and then a second output appears. And the same is true of groove. Which, uh, as I say, I can also give a second argument two, which is the number of channels. So that's that. These objects will all read back uh, from, a sound, uh, from a buffer and play, their, play its contents. Um, we can also write into a buffer and we can do that using an object called record tilde. And once again we'd give it my sound one uh, to refer to this buffer, although obviously if we wanted it to refer to any of the others we'd give the other um, buffer names. And I, again, uh, can put in two to say two input, input this time, channels. Um, and we have two input channels, one labelled uh, channel one in, the other one labelled uh, channel two in. Channel one in, you notice, also has some other things that it does. So you can send it a message to say start, start or stop. So start recording or stop recording. Um, and then there's some others as well. So things like peak which would also um, write to it in some way, but we won't, we won't worry too much about what these do at the moment. One. So peek and poke, uh, we can put in, uh, what else? Oh yes, cycle will also refer to my sound, of, to, to, the, to a buffer. Okay. So there's a variety of different objects which all refer to uh, the buffers. Let me just check time. 